Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to perform liquid scale data analysis. I repeat, we'll be looking at how to analyze liquid scale items using SPSS. Particularly, we will be using descriptive statistics, which is a crucial aspect of many research studies. Even before I proceed to demonstrate how to conduct data analysis for liquid scale data, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. In this video, I will be interested in showing you how to generate tables that are not only easy to understand, but also effective for research publications. So if you're a researcher or a scholar or a student looking to present your data clearly and professionally, this video is for you. To make my point very clear, I have taken a sample research paper. The title of this research paper is called Own Language Use in ELT, Exploring Global Practices and Attitudes. This is a research paper published by Graham Hall and Guy Cook. So full credit to these two gentlemen for making this research paper available. As you can see, I have got a nice looking table. This table analyzes the teacher's perception of the institutional culture around own language usage. There are six items in this question. The first liquid scale item is teachers can decide for themselves the balance of English and own language use in the classroom. Second liquid scale item here would be my school or institution expects classes to be taught only in English. Like this, we have six questions along the row. I'd like to draw your attention to what we have along the column. You can see here, we have the percentage of the different categories of liquid scale items, like strongly agree percentage, agree, neither agree nor disagree, disagree percentage, then we have strongly disagree percentage, not applicable percentage. As you can see, there are a lot of numbers. The numbers that you see in each of the cells indicate the percentage of respondents who agreed or disagreed to a particular statement. Example, approximately 29% of people strongly agreed with the first statement. 45% of them agreed to the first statement. 8.4% of people neither agreed nor disagreed. Like this, we have a lot of numbers that you see in the table. Many times when you're a research, when you're doing research as a researcher, you would want to develop such powerful, simple and effective tables. But we tend to struggle, especially if we do not know how to use statistical softwares. So let me show you a very simple and an easy way as to how you can generate the tables that you're seeing on your screen using SPSS. With this background, let me proceed to show you the example that I have in mind. As you can see, I am working on SPSS. This is a data set which I've picked up from media and entertainment industry. This data set is called as Phonofilm dataset. There are 22 columns in the dataset. The first, I, uh, the first variable, my apologies, is the questionnaire ID. Then we have liquid scale items. These are all attitudinal questions. For example, if you look at the first question, it says, I enjoy going to the cinema. The second question talks about, I like a wide range of choice in the video shop. Let's now focus on the third question. My leisure activities are mainly out of the home. So these are all liquid scale items that I have. How many such liquid scale items do I have? Let me scroll to the extreme right side. You can see here the last liquid scale item that you have is the 21st attitudinal question. Let's pay attention to the rating that people have given. The first respondent whose ID number is two has given a rating of three for the first question. 
he is again rated the second question as three and the third question as one. If you want to know the value label or the description of each of these cells, you can go ahead and select the value labels option. You can see here, neutral, neutral for the first two questions, strongly disagree for the third question. Now, what is the sample size in this data? We have approximately 328 records in this data set. Now, the question is, how do we summarize and get a consolidated report in SPSS for these 21 liquid scale items and for 328 respondents? So let me break this down for you. The first thing that you need to do is go to the Analyze menu bar. I repeat, please go to the Analyze menu bar in SPSS. The next thing that you need to do is go to the third option from the top, which is called as tables. Within tables, you have two different options. The first is what is called as custom tables. And the second one is what is called as multiple response sets. I would urge you to select the first option, custom tables. Let me open up the custom tables dialog box. You can see here, this is the custom tables dialog box. Let me go ahead and hit the reset button. So when you look at the custom tables, this is how the dialog box for custom tables appears. All the variables that you have in the data set are listed in the canvas to the left hand side. You see a very dominant black, my apologies, a very dominant empty space here. Here, there's a box which is asking for rows and at the top, you can see the columns. What we tend to do is we tend to take all the liquid scale items and move it along the rows. How do we do this? You can select using the shift button, select all the 21 liquid scale data items, drag this and drop it into the box which says rows. You can see here. SPSS now gives you a preview wherein it is giving you the breakdown of the five categories like strongly agree, disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly disagree for each of the questions. But hang on a minute. This is not what I want. I don't want strongly agree, disagree, neutral along the row as SPSS is giving me. I want the five categories of liquid scale items along the column, not along the row. So this is where I need to maneuver some of these options. How do I do this? The first thing that I need to do is choose the option position. Here, please make sure that you have columns. Sometimes people tend to choose rows. I do not need rows. I'll make sure that the option columns is present. Next, have a look at category position. The default option produces a report like this, which is not what I want. Let me click on the drop down menu. There are two options default and row labels in columns. This is the most crucial step that you need to perform. Change this option to row labels in the column. I repeat, ensure that you have row labels in column. And as far as summary statistics is concerned, the position should be columns. Once you have ensured that these two things are done, you can see here the breakdown of the liquid scale categories, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree will appear along the columns. And each of the liquid scale statements will be displayed along the row. You can have a look at the cell values. It says N, N, which simply means that it is going to display the number or count. Now, how do we change the values in the cell? Here is where the second level of maneuvering comes into picture. May I draw your attention to the define option? Under the define option, you have summary statistics as well as categories and totals. 
let me click on summary statistics you can see here the default option here is count this is the default option you can click on apply to selection and hit the ok button this is the summary table that we have generated what you're seeing here is the output window of SPSS. Each and every statement is shown along the row. And we have the five categories of liquid scale data items along the column that is strongly disagree, disagree, so on and so forth. The numbers that you're seeing, that is 32, 80, 68, 64, and 84, indicates the number of respondents who have strongly disagreed with the first statement. Similarly, you can interpret that 80 respondents have disagreed with the first statement, 68 have expressed a neutral opinion, 64 have agreed to the first statement, 84 have strongly agreed to the first statement. Now, you may be thinking that we do not need, we do not need the count. What we need is the percentage. Right? So how do we display the percentage instead of the count? To display the percentage, you can go back to the Analyze menu bar. Third option is Tables. Here, the very first item is Custom Tables. Let me click on Custom Tables. These are This is the preview of the table. I will go back to Summary Statistics. Now, this opens up the Summary Statistics. Earlier, under the display section, we had selected count. Let me remove the count section. How do I display the percentage? The third option from the top indicates row N percentage. This will give you the row percentage, which I am going to select by clicking on the arrow. You can see here, now what SPSS will do is to generate the row percentage. Don't forget, to select apply to selection. Here you can see SPSS indicates the percentage symbol for each and every cell. Once you have selected this, you can go ahead and hit the OK button. Again, SPSS takes me to the output window. I've got all the statements along the row, the five liquid scale items along the column, and you can see the percentages here. Now. There's a simple verification that we can do. You can add up the rows. You can add up all the cells along the row. You have approximately 10%. You can add it up to 24. 10 plus 24 would be 34. 34 plus 24 would be 54. 54 plus 20 would be 74. And then 74 plus 25 would be approximately 99%. If you also add up the decimals, it would add up to 100%. So like this, what we are getting would be the row percentage, which would sum up to 100% along the row. So for example, for each and every statement, we can understand what is the dominant opinion that is given. If you look at the first statement, the biggest number here is 25%, which means that majority of the people, my apologies, is not 25%. It is, it is not 24.4. In fact, it is 25.6%. So 25.6% of people have strongly agreed with the first statement. When you look at the second statement, 32% is the biggest number, which means that majority of the people have agreed, strongly agreed with the second statement. This is how we can go on to interpret each and every number. But hang on a minute, there's a problem. SPSS displays row N percent, which is the statistics that it is using. Now for presentation purpose in a thesis, we do not need row N percent. So how do we remove the row N percent? To remove the row N percent, you can go back to dialog recall, reopen custom tables, you can see here, this is the preview of the table that we have generated. Here, we have an option called as hide. Let me go on to click on this option hide. 
please observe what happens to row n percentage that SPSS is displaying currently. Let me select height, row n vanishes. If you want it back, you can remove this option. I'll select this option and hit the OK button. You can see here, I've got a nice little table which gives me the distribution of customer's opinion or customer's preference against each and every question. So what you can do is select the table, right click. You can choose the option copy. All that you need to do is select the second option from the top, which is to copy. Let me open up a Word document. You can see here, this is the table, which I'm going to paste. You may have to slightly resize the table. These are the numbers that we are getting. We can go ahead and resize the table. You can see here, this is how you will get the table once you resize. And this can be used for further interpretation of the table. If you wish to, you can change this to SD or strongly disagree. This can be simply further modified as D. This would be N. I can change this to agreed. And this would be SA or strongly agree. So this is how simple it is using custom tables option in SPSS, how we can analyze liquid scale items and interpret. Further, we can go ahead and copy paste the table in SPSS, in fact, from SPSS to Word. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. I thank you very much for watching this particular video. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos once again. Thank you very much once again. Have a great day ahead.